If you have ever ridden a bike in Melbourne, you'd have come across a simple bike lane. They're everywhere. They're described by the city of Melbourne as being a separation between bike riders and adjacent vehicles provided by a single continuous white line. And that's all that's supposed to protect you on your bike from several tons of metal approaching you at 60 km per hour from behind. There's a very simple reason why these lanes are in Melbourne. They can be installed without reducing or affecting car capacity. Bike lanes in Melbourne are a marriage of convenience and are installed only where they needed the least. These simple lanes generally terminate awkwardly before intersections, where people riding bikes are vulnerable to traffic coming at them from many more angles than when they're mid-block, forcing them to merge with general traffic and navigate their way, unassisted, across an intersection. These lanes, whether they were designed to or not, make a commute as stressful and unpleasant as possible, and force you into the least safe spot on the road, squished between passing cars and parked cars whose doors could open at any moment. Without these lanes, people would ride out of the door zone. People are conditioned to ride between the lines, even though these lines are simply there to get them out of the way. The City of Melbourne's research has found that 78% of people on bikes don't feel comfortable riding in simple bike lanes, and the only surprise is how that number isn't a lot higher. A lot of simple bike lanes are on roads with speed limits of 60 km per hour, where the chance of survival of a person hit by a car when they're walking or on their bike is minimal. And considering that 1 in 17 cars in Melbourne will pass within 100 centimetres of you, it makes perfect sense that the primary reason many people do not ride their bikes to work is a combination of a fear of poor infrastructure and a fear of the cars that would surround them. Because of this, we must understand that when we design our streets and public spaces, not only is it imperative to deliver safety, but if we want to be truly egalitarian, our spaces must also feel safe for everyone. This is especially pertinent when viewed through the lens of equity, where in Australia, on commutes, men outnumber women three to one in Melbourne, and more than four to one in Sydney. Yet these gender gaps are simply not there with a more mature cycling culture and better infrastructure in nations such as the Netherlands and Denmark. Safer alternatives, like Copenhagen lanes, are occasionally found around the city. These protected lanes position parked cars as a buffer to bicycles instead of as a threat, and these lanes make riding a bike feel much safer and more welcoming. I see the construction of new ones pretty regularly, but they still often terminate far before intersections, or when it gets too complicated to put them in at all. An example of this is the St Kilda Road Protected Bike Path that was first proposed in 2007 and still hasn't started construction after more than a decade of political quagmire. If we want our society to be safer, healthier and more sustainable, we must recognise that commuters will not switch from cars to bicycles until they are allowed to travel from their homes to their work or their school or just to the supermarket without fearing for their lives. Until that happens, the majority of our spaces will be occupied by cars, polluting our air and our atmosphere, depriving us of public spaces and trees and contributing to the obesity epidemic in this country.